All right. Welcome, everybody. I'm super excited to have Karen Thomas with us here today. How's it going, Karen? I'm doing amazing, Gary. Thank you so much for having me on in your incredible group. It's always such a pleasure chatting with you. Yes, yes. Yeah. Awesome group. There's always great people here. Great questions. I'm excited. Yes. Thank you for coming on, Karen. And um, Karen is, for those of you guys who don't know, uh, Karen is an alumni of the Seven Figure Seller Summit. She's spoken previously about listing optimization, and then she's also um, working with Helium 10 as well with a lot of exciting stuff with, um, you know, her Amazon business. And today I thought it'd be cool to offer a live training talking about a deep dive into keyword research. So I know that for many people, this is like, you know, a big, uh, challenge, right? Because I mean, it's like the pieces of the puzzles that, that you want to build in order to create, um, a listing that converts. So I really wanted to invite Karen on for that. And then we also got a ton of pre-submitted questions, um, which is awesome. And uh, we'll try to incorporate that into Karen's presentation. And also there'll, there'll be time at the end for, um, for Q&A as well. So um, a quick intro of Karen for those of you guys that don't know Karen. So Karen Thomas is very passionate about sharing her love of Helium 10 to help Amazon sellers get the best results. And she's the founder of two seven figure businesses and her expertise is in optimizing Amazon product listings with Helium 10 and using her te unique technique maximizing the why. And then she loves to find new and creative ways to connect customers to keyword and review research, uh, compelling sales copy, gorgeous lifestyle images, and entertaining product videos. And she's been featured speakers at many uh, business events worldwide. Okay. So um, Karen, before we begin, could you share with us um, who is this training for ideally? That's an excellent question, Gary. I think, you know, keyword research is one of those topics where I think you could be even the most, you know, high level Jedi master and there's still something to learn because everybody does it different. I don't feel like there's always one right answer. So I feel like this is for, you know, people just starting out and it could also be, you know, people that are, you know, multiple seven, eight figure business owners that maybe I'm going to show something that they didn't realize you could do with Helium 10. So I feel like there's something for everybody in this webinar. So I'm excited. Awesome. That's great. And then also I'd like to give a quick shout out to a couple of people that we have in the webinar so far, uh, a quick shout out to Byron and Jason. And uh, we like to keep the, the webinar interactive. So if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the chat or to raise your hand and Karen will get to them as um, as we go through the presentation. And for those of you guys that couldn't join live, obviously we'll have the replay and then you can catch this. And then at the end, if you stick around, um, Karen has also prepared a special bonus offer for us uh, to get a really nice discount with Helium 10. All right, so uh, without further ado, I'll turn things over to you, Karen, if you would like to start the show. I would love to. First of all, Jason, I gotta give you extra bonus points for having your video on. But I will say it's a blessing and a curse because I'm seeing all those big degrees behind you. So I'm like, ooh, we got some yeah. smart people on yeah, this. Yeah, I'm group. a little intimidated. <laughs> it's, like, it's like no pressure, right? Got yeah. Some... <laughs> you have to use them the right way in order for them to be uh, useful. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Good. Very effective, Jason. Awesome. So yeah, like Gary was saying, keyword research is essential in every single part of your Amazon business, right? You know, my specialty, like Gary was saying, is listing optimization. I really like to build out, you know, highly optimized listings, which means having the right keywords and then having the right, you know, imagery through your images and video, but those all go together, right? It's all the same using that keyword research and that data to help you drive your decisions. So it's super important. And obviously you can't talk about key research without also talking about, you know, PPC and launching and ranking. So it's, it's a really big topic and I'm excited to kind of share my perspective on it. And hopefully, you know, this will be illuminating on how I use some of our Helium 10 tools. So let me just pull up my screen here and show you some things. Okay. So here is our lovely Helium 10 dashboard. So I'm in Cerebro and 
Jason, have you used Cerebral a lot? Do you know about this beautiful tool? Oh. Oh, Jason, you're muted. Do you want to unmute? Yep, thank you. No, I'm kind of new to this. I'm actually just jumped on to help out Byron and I guess right now I'm kind of onboarding this, learning what I can, so. That's fantastic. I love when I have some new people to share this incredible tool with. So Cerebro is actually, I would say our number one tool that made Helium 10 famous because it is so, so, so valuable to do keyword research. So basically what it is, it's a reverse ASIN lookup. So every single listing on Amazon has an identification number known as an ASIN. And so what you can do here is you can put in a main ASIN. So whether it's yours or let's say it's your top competitor, you're wanting to get into it before you launch a product. So you have your main ASIN, which is your first one. So that's going to be really important. We'll get to that in just a minute. And then you can add, you know, many other ASINs in here to kind of see what keywords are driving the most sales and figure out which ones are going to be the most relevant to your listing. So with our Cerebro tool, you can click on get competitors and we'll automatically populate some different competitors that, you know, Helium 10 quickly gathers that they think is going to be most relevant. So this is really cool. This is a new iteration of Cerebro, which I think has saved me a ton of time. So you can just like quickly scroll through and just figure out, you know, what is the most relevant. So maybe I look at this, I'm like, mm, it's not colored pencils, it's a color pencil holder, so I don't need that one. But let's say this is something relevant, this is similar. So just making sure, you know, you have that human touch that you're looking at what Helium 10 gives you as options and then just making sure that we're using the most relevant options that are most similar to your product. They look similar and similar pricing, et cetera. So let's say I've got my 10, you can put up to 20 and you click okay. And then I'm gonna click get competitors. And I'm gonna show you kind of how I filter out and play with this data a bit to find really good keywords. Okay. So I'm gonna do a new search. Karen, sorry to interrupt. Can I ask a quick question? I, I really want to make sure we understand from the from the get go. So mm -hmm. I see that you're starting with searching your competitors, like a reverse ASIN search. Would you mm -hmm. suggest that when people start doing it to do the same, or should they begin with like a seed keyword, like pencil case, and see what you know your your tool tells you? Mm, that's a good question. I think it's one of those things again, Gary, where it's kind of just personal preference. For me, I like to start with Cerebro for my main keyword research. And then you're right, I like to kind of go back and then do some long tail seed keywords, keyword research using Magnet, which I'll look at in just a minute. But this is how I prefer to do it. But I'm sure many of the people do it differently. So, and there's that's what's fun. It's, there's not necessarily one size fits all, you can do it many different ways and it all hopefully accomplishes the same thing as getting really good keyword research data to use. Cool. Yeah. It's kind of like an art and a science, you know, everyone's style is a little different, but I was just curious. Exactly. So good stuff. Let's keep going. Thank you. Set. Yeah. So after it pulls up this data, you can see that we have tons of different keywords showing up, right? There's over 36,000 different keywords that these different ASINs are indexing for on Amazon, which just means that they're searchable. So when I search, um, for example, pencil bag, you can see it's a misspelling, then one of these ASINs, if not all of them, will show up in that search. So that's what we refer to as being indexed. So we have all these different keywords, right? So obviously we can't use all of that data. So now we need to whittle it down to focus on what's gonna be most relevant and most impactful for my listing, right? And let's just pretend I'm gonna create a new listing from scratch so for me, I'm gonna start with the search volume and I wanna find keywords that are doing at least, let's say 300 searches a month. So I'm gonna whittle out the ones that are not, you know, getting as much um, searches. And then I wanna look at position rank. So let's try to find keywords that are only on page one for these ASINs, because these are the ASINs that are my, now these are the, the listings that are making the most money Let's just assume that I've already done some research on Amazon and I'll just show you what I mean by that. Okay, so it's a pencil case. So let's just search that pencil case. So let's see what comes up. See if our 
suggestions match. So you can see when I was looking in Cerebral and it kind of pulled up some suggestions for competitors, a lot of these showed up. So how they found that data is basically doing that search for this main keyword, pencil case, you can see who is making the bulk of the sales. It's gonna take just a minute, though it takes a little bit longer, right, on Zoom. Okay. Yeah, there's a, a lot of data it has to load, yeah. right? Seriously. Okay. Karen, I'm curious, like, how long would this process normally take? I mean, for like, I know you're an expert, but like the average person, I mean, how long would this, the keyword research, like a couple hours or like days or, or I'm curious. That's an excellent question. I would say, I would recommend putting aside, you know, three to four hours to do a deep dive. And if it's your first time, you know what I mean? You may need to do this several times. And what's really cool about all of our tools excuse me, is we have this learn button right here. So if, I don't know if you're like me, I'm the type of person that needs to hear something, you know, 10 plus times until it becomes cemented and really, you know, it's not just learn knowledge, it's action knowledge. So you keep playing with it and practicing it. So what's great about all of our tools is you can just go back and learn these pro training tool videos by Bradley. And then once you do it several times, it's gonna get faster and faster. But I would say, you know, at least, your first time set aside four to five hours to just watch the videos, pause it, and then practice it. Makes sense. And just, yeah, the easier the more you do it. And it's really good. I feel like Bradley did a great job with these videos. It's very educational. Yeah, that's awesome. Okay. Yeah, thank you so much. So basically we wanna know who's making the most money, right? With these sales, because those are gonna be the listings to watch, right? Those are the listings that are making the most money that are listings that we need to learn from. So I pulled up some of these in Cerebral. These are some of the ASINs that I put in our reverse ASIN search. And you can see they're doing, you know, 38,000, 41,000, 131. So these listings are doing super, super well. So they're making the bulk of the sales. So those keywords are, excuse me, those ASINs are the ones I put in here. And then I, now I need to whittle down, okay, those listings have all of these different keywords that they're indexing for. So now I need to figure out which ones are the most important to target. And you'll see that, you know, a lot of these, it's easier to index for because they are kind of a long-term or a long-tail keyword. So it's just a different variation of pencil case, right? And so you can kind of add up a bunch and we can talk about that in a minute of how to kind of get the most bang for your buck. But Let's just focus for a minute on, you know, how to find some top keywords here. So I want to see which of these keywords of all of these 36,000 are making the most money for them. So I'm assuming that the keywords that are on page one for these Pacific ASINs are the ones that are driving the most sales. So I've just did a simple search, at least three, 300 searches a month in position one to 20, which is just means on the first page. And then I'm going to hit apply here and let's see what it whittles this down to. Awesome, so now we have 45 keywords. So this is a lot more manageable of a list, right? And so it gives us all sorts of helpful information. Let's see, I might have some advanced filters on here too. No, good, okay. Awesome, so we can kind of sort this by different fields. We can you know, sort it by the highest search volume keywords and then down from there. So cute pencil case is almost 10,000 keywords a month, or excuse me, 10,000 searches a month. And then it kind of goes down from there. So then what I like to do is just go through the list and take out anything that isn't relevant. So pen pouch, that looks good. School stuff, it's not as, you know, super targeted, but it's obviously relevant, right? People are buying this pencil bag for school pen bag, aesthetic pencil case, team things. That's a bit of a stretch, but we'll leave it there. So I wanna cross out anything that doesn't seem relevant or maybe it's a brand. I'm gonna automatically cross it off my list, right? So goo plaid pencil case. Let's see what that is. Uh, looks, sounds like it could be a brand, but no. 
Looks like that's actually a keyword. Interesting. So I'm just going to go through and make sure everything looks good and relevant. Sometimes you may see like this. This looks like a brand. So I'm going to exit off my list. And then we can kind of whittle it down from there. And what I like to do is we have a really cool feature called our keyword list. And so you can make a new folder and kind of organize some of your keyword research here. So you don't have, like in the olden days, I used to have Excel spreadsheets and go back and forth, back and forth and adding and sorting. And so what's cool is you can just have it all in one place. So let's just call this um, top pencil bag. So we created that folder and then now let's add those to the folder. Awesome. Okay, so now those are added. So another cool trick, um, we can get even more intense here. Sorry, my automatic lights went off here. So we can get even more crazy. And we can try to figure out which competitors are kind of the hidden gems, right? Which, which keywords are not getting the, the most focus, right? So what we can do here, and this is kind of a crazy cool trick that I learned from Bradley, but on this competitor rank average, and what I did to get here, it's just this advanced filters. So these are just the general filters are really easy to do, right? Just search volume, position rank, word count, you can do match type, organic sponsor or Amazon recommended. And then you can go from there. So I didn't do it. I didn't select any for mine, it was pretty general. But if we wanna get way more crazy, this advanced filter option, you can do all sorts of cool tricks to whittle down and manipulate the data here. But using these two categories right here, we can kind of find different keywords that a lot of the top competitors aren't focusing on. They're indexed for, but maybe they're not doing a lot of PPC or they don't have it in their listing. I mean, they don't have it in their title and maybe they're not doing as much to rank for those keywords. So the, for me, that kind of sparks, oh, this is an opportunity here that this is gonna be a lot easier to rank for using PPC, maybe doing some search by and by, but it's gonna be a lot easier of a battle, right? Versus the top ones that are gonna be way more competitive. So let's do right here with the competitor rank average. Let's just put 25. And then in this advanced filter rank, let's do a minimum of one, max of two. And then we want to show only the keywords that are on position one through 10. And then we're gonna hit apply. And now we have 15 different keywords. And let's just sort this by search volume here. So you can see just looking at some of the competitor rank average, the average rank for some of these keywords is super, super high, right? This is 70, 28, 111. So these are keywords that, you know, these top ranking listings are not focusing as hard on. So there's a lot more opportunity to kind of work your way in, right? Starting from the outside and working your way up to the more competitive ones, which I think is a really effective strategy to you know, kind of take it one by one and focus on those easier to rank for keywords. So like stuff for college students, this has an average competitor rank of 77, a decent amount of searches, not a ton, but still you can, you know, that adds up if you have several of these that you start ranking for on page one. So these are some good opportunities here. Pencil box cute, canvas pen pouch, so I might want to put these specific keywords um, in some specific, in some targeted areas in my listing and maybe do some exact phrase match PPC campaigns to hopefully rank for those keywords easier. Karen, okay, well, uh, sorry to interrupt. I think this is really interesting because we're kind of like uncovering some of like almost the gaps in the market, if I'm yeah. understanding correctly. Because, exactly. you know, some of the top competitors, they're like, they may be overlooking these keywords. So, you know, we can, it could be like, um, like a lower mountain to climb to try to index yeah. for these keywords. So um, I'm curious, like, um, 
at the same time, like the search volume, I know these are long tail, you know, we see some that have like 800, 600, 600. Is, is there like a benchmark that you, you go for when it comes to long tail, like weighing, like, hey, that's still okay, or that's, that's not going to make any difference? Like, I'm curious. Yeah, it's one of those kind of judgment call things, to be honest, I don't always have a hard and fast rule, personally. Mm -hmm. It's definitely, yeah, like looking in, and let's just go to like team things. And if I look here and it's, you know, not super relevant, I'm not seeing any, you know, pencil bags. I'm like, ooh, someone may search this and not be like, you know what I mean? I'm in the market yeah. for a pencil bag. Yeah. But let's say something like this, pencil box cute. Yeah, it has less, a lot less searches, but this could be an easier one to target and start making some fast wins. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's a great question. Okay. So even though like the search volume is like below a thousand, it's only in like the hundreds, if it's relevant, you would still consider it, right? Yeah, I would, especially yeah. I say 300 is kind of my benchmark. Okay. If it's at least 300 searches a month and it looks yeah. You know, like my product would be relevant that if someone was searching for aesthetic school supplies for teen girls, I'm like, yeah, this could be interesting. If we can rank it on page one with sponsored ads using PPC, that definitely starts adding up, right? If we can convert that. Right. Okay, great. Thank you. My pleasure. So Bradley actually did a, a cool keyword research training today, and he shared something really, really awesome on how to find you know, the top keywords that someone's ranking or converting for with their PPC campaigns, which I thought was super, super cool. I wanted to share that if that's okay. So basically, if you have your top competitor, and I'm just going to assume, let's just say this is going to be my top competitor, this seed keyword right here. So let's get keywords, new search. So we're going to try to just find the keywords that they are converting for with their sponsored ads in the first five position and they're ranked on page one for, for those keywords. This is a cool trick. I was like, dang, Bradley, this is awesome. So if you guys didn't get a chance to watch it, I recommend watching it because this was a cool hack you shared. So right here, let's do, like we mentioned, okay, highlighted, let's do a search volume is 300. We want the organic rank of this listing to be in the first page. And then right here in the advanced features, excuse me, in the advanced filters, we're gonna have the sponsored rank in the first five positions. And then let's see what this particular listing is ranking for well. Wow, so pencil pouch cute, they're converting for really well. You can see on the sponsored rank, they're position one, their organic rank is position one. So right here, it's kind of this cheat sheet to see all of the top keywords that they're focusing on and converting for. So for me, this is like a good cue for me of, hmm, these are the keywords I definitely want to have in my listing. And hopefully if it's not too competitive with, you have to you know, test it to know how much the cost per, per click is gonna be. But obviously it's super relevant, right? If my product's similar to theirs and hopefully I have something that differentiates from theirs, right? Maybe it's or design or it's an extra feature. So hopefully if they see mine next to their listing, they're gonna be like, oh, well, I like this design better. Or I like that not only is this a cute pencil bag, but they also have a free eraser or something cool, right? But it's important to know which ones are actually converting so that we can, you know, know where to put our, our limited marketing dollars. So I think this is a super helpful Tricks. So how I did that again is just in the search volume, I do 300 and then organic rank one to 10. And then in the advanced filter column, I just went the sponsored rank position is one to five. So that that was really a cool little hack. Awesome. Awesome. And Karen, just to make sure I understand, this mm -hmm. is to find out some of the top keywords that your competitors are ranking on. And these are like, basically, we, we got to rank for these because, you know, everybody's ranking for these. Is that right? Exactly. And they're converting on their ads, right? But these are the, 
their ads are converting really well. And it's kind of, to me, it's alluding to that because they're doing sponsor ads and they're converting so well, they are also ranking really well, right? Yeah, yeah. Because they're paying to be ranked, to, exactly. to rank for these keywords. So the assumption is, I mean, they're making some money, otherwise they wouldn't be paying for these, right? Exactly. So these are awesome. like really important keywords that you could do exact phrase campaigns around. And yeah, obviously these are driving some good sales for them. So perfect. yeah, thank you for clarifying that. And then, yeah, let's touch really quick on, um, you mentioned earlier about finding long tail keywords. So this is another cool way that we could do a keyword search through. Um, so let's just use this same example, a pencil case. And then we'll do a new search and get keywords. Awesome. So they have tons of different keywords, but what's really important for me, especially in Magnet, is a Smart Complete. So Smart Complete is the long tail keywords with pencil case in it. So if you do like a broad match campaign, you know that you've got a lot of different options with that 7,500 different possibilities that Amazon could rank you for with a broad match campaign. So we're gonna do Smart Complete and just whittle this down. So we see again, this keyword phrase, cute pencil cases, and we can filter this out with search volume. You can see also the number of competing products. So we also get an idea of, you know, how many different listings are showing up. So like this one's interesting. Well, never mind. <laughs> yeah, it's a pencil holder, but not super comparable, right? Because it's an iPad eighth generation and yeah, we're not selling I, I, that's, iPads. That's the iPad pencil. Yeah. <laughs> it's not like a, like a regular, yeah. Well said. Not the Apple pencil. Yeah. 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 So we can get rid of some of these that are just, yeah, yeah not yeah. relevant. Pencil case for kids. It looks like it has around a thousand competitors and decent amount of search volume, right? So this is really cool to kind of get some ideas for, you know, long tail keyword phrases. And I saw somebody had asked one of the questions earlier, um, you know, how to find keywords that, you know, maybe it's a new product, it's a new niche and Amazon doesn't have any data, right? Nobody's searching for, let's say, um, let's just use example of Project X that Bradley did. So like a wooden egg tray, that was kind of a new product, right? That the market hadn't seen and nobody was really searching for wooden egg tray, right? So then you have to be clever, right? Obviously you can try to rank for just egg tray. That's a big search word. But other times, you know, you can, and I've seen people be really effective of, you know, basically building in a whole business strategy of having just gifts as an interesting one. Um, for example, like, gift for eight-year-old and then just go really really hard trying to rank it's funny sorry about that so we go back to magnet and gifts for yeah people build their whole strategy around something like this category, like gift for six-year-old or finding some sort of relevant niche, right? Like um, baby shower gift or new mom gift. And they just niche it down really tight so that even though maybe nobody's searching for, you know, like we said, the egg tray or let's just pretend fidget spinner wasn't even a searchable word that people were searching for, then you can target more a general category like gift for six-year-old and go heavier on that keyword and keywords like that. And then, you know, we can figure out some of the, the long tail keywords around that as well. So it's kind of a cool trick on, you know, finding a niche when there isn't a niche for your product, right? Best gifts for six-year-old girls, six-year-old gift ideas, be a gift for six-year-old. So that way you can kind of, you know, 
have a cool workaround to find a way to sell your product if it's not necessarily being searched at this moment in time. And again, there's obviously other ways you can drive outside traffic to Facebook, to your Amazon listing. But if you're just relying on Amazon's traffic, then you got to find a way to bring people to your listing, right? I have so, a, uh, a quick question. Yeah, go ahead, Jason. Um, so for the competing products, is that strictly just products that fall kind of within the same category? Or are those products that are using those same keywords? Yeah, so it's for that category. Okay. And so that's just kind of generated based off of the back end by Amazon or something, or I guess y'all system. Okay. So that's, those are our estimations. So they're not exact, okay. but they are estimated. Okay. So ideally it would be good to try to find, I guess, something with the high search volume and then I guess a low sponsored I guess what would be like your key indicators for the perfect scenario of a word that you would identify? Yeah, I would say, so this, again, this kind of goes back to the human touch. So mm -hmm. let's say for example, something like this keyword. So I'd want to go and kind of verify some things. And if I'm just barely starting out, you can tell I'm going to get a little bit freaked out, right? If I'm trying to rank for this particular keyword phrase because every single listing I see has thousands and thousands and thousands of reviews. So even if I do, you know, have this beautiful listing, I have an incredible product and I spend a ton on PPC to rank it at the top of the page, because this is going to be a more competitive keyword, right? Because you've got big players in here, right? With tons of reviews. So I'm assuming that I don't know that but I'm assuming that. So it'd be interesting to test it and maybe it wouldn't be as expensive, but even still, let's just say it's not super crazy. I get here at the top in the sponsored ad section, but you know, mine has two reviews versus 1300, 1100, you know what I mean? It's gonna be way harder to rank. So for me, it's kind of this balance of, yeah, it's got a, a decent amount of search history or search volume and not a ton of competitors, but I would say the competitors can be kind of misleading because it's more so what's happening on that page, right? So I would say looking at the reviews, looking how well the listings are done on that first page, and these all look pretty well done, right? All of these listings look like sellers that know what they're doing to an extent, right? You see this is a video ad. They all look like really good images for their main listing. So for me, I'm kind of, ooh, this is gonna be an uphill battle versus, you know, maybe let's just say this one has, you know, 9,000 different competing products for this keyword. And let's just see, this is probably the same story, but let's just assume, so yeah, some more things. Well, look at this one, this is interesting. This one only has 34 reviews. And if they can prove the concept, right? If I see that this listing has 34 reviews, then I might be like, well, they've kind of proven the concept that you don't have to have thousands of reviews to rank on this page and still do well. So obviously it's a unique product. They're kind of standing out. And again, that can go for and against you sometimes, right? It can either be like, what is this random product? Or it's like, oh, who knew I needed this water? Let's see what this is, this flower kit for a birthday gift, right? And that, because it's so unique, maybe that's what's helping it stand out. So let's just see what the data say, says. Using our x-ray tool, I just used our Chrome extension right here and clicked on x-ray. And it's just pulling up the data. It's gonna show us the sales, the revenue. I like to see how many reviews they have, the review velocity, how fast they're getting reviews every month, when the listing was created. So if it's a fairly new listing and they're doing really well, I could be like, well, this, there's no way they're doing that well. So they must be doing a ton of, you know, search by and buy and other ways to drive sales. But if it looks pretty stable, like in the sales graph, I'm like, okay, well, then these must be organic, legit buys, right? So let's see that listing that we want to see the flower one. Okay, here they are. So this one, the 34. Wow. So 
to me, Jason, that gives me hope when I see they've only got 34 reviews and they're doing almost 40 K a month and it's consistent. So I know it's not just a quick, like they're just doing search find buy and they're quickly ranking. This looks like they have some consistent growth. Yeah, so it's a pretty new-ish listing, but still, it seems like it's hit the ground running. Let's see when the listing was created. So it looks like it's not available yet, so it's probably new-ish, but still, it looks, it looks somewhat promising. So they're getting about 21 reviews a month. So not crazy, but not... I don't know. I'm still a little bit suspicious of how legit those orders are because it still could be search by and buy orders and not organic. So let's just see. And then, you know, a lot of these other ones, thousands and thousands. This one has 56 reviews and it's doing about 3,000 a month. Not super promising, right? So that's kind of how I would go through and kind of use some of that, that human feel of, you know, does this look achievable? Can I stand out on this page and win, right? If I spend, you know, a good amount on PPC every day, am I going to get there? Hopefully stick the landing, right? Stay on page one and, you know, people are going to want to buy and they're not going to get freaked out because I have less reviews. And if I can see, you know, two or three listings that are doing that. I'm like, okay, well, this obviously is potential to do that, especially if I know my product's gonna stand out with the better main image, et cetera. Great question though, Jason. Okay, cool. so. Yeah. Thanks for that question. And uh, Karen, I see that Byron had a question in the chat as well. Byron says, I'm a new seller on Amazon for six months. Where should I spend my time to get the high test impact from keyword research. What do you think, Karen? Um, so for me, I would say definitely do Cerebro. This is going to be, I think, your best friend with keyword research. And then obviously testing as well, because every, you know what I mean, everybody's different. So one easy way to kind of see what's going to work the best for you is you know, do some good keyword research with our Helium 10 tools. And then I'll, and I'll show you really quick an example of where to put some of those keywords to get the most SEO juice for your listing. And then you can just do a simple like auto campaign with your piece, PPC. So then you can figure out with real data, you know, which keywords are sticking the line for you. So let's just do a random example. Let's just say I'm selling this. I do an auto campaign. I don't have a ton of reviews. I'm just trying to figure out, you know, where am I getting the most buys from? And if I'm seeing pencil box Q is performing really well, then I can, you know, split, take that out and put it into its own campaign for an exact phrase match. And I can go heavier on this because I know I'm converting really well for that keyword. And then, you know, let's say this is another keyword that I'm ranking for really well and I'm getting good sales on my auto campaign for a pouch pencil case. Again, then I can go harder on that. So I'm not sure if that answers your question, Brian. If it doesn't, please feel free to, you know, uh, explain or let me know what you want me to go deeper on. Excellent. And this is great, Karen. And I know that we, uh, you, you also wanted to cover where to put keywords, SEO, as well as some listing optimization as well. We have about 20 minutes left. So uh, just to let you know the, the clock. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Gary, for keeping me on track here. So let's just say I did that little trick to figure out which keywords. Oh, well, this is the multi-ASIN search. But let's just, let's just look at this example really quick. Well, no, sorry. Let's go back to the other one, just a single. Okay. So let's just say I really want to focus on these particular 40 keywords, right? Okay. Okay. So these are the ones that are spending money on PPC. These are the keywords that are converting really well. 
they're ranking really well with their organic ranking and their, and their sponsored ad campaigns. And so let's just say I want to target these 40 keywords. I'm going to do exact phrase match PPC campaigns, and I'm going to also put these in my listing. So let me just show you how I would do that. Um, Okay, so I added it into my keyword list and you can go back to that list in this little thumbtack at the bottom. And you've got your products list and you got your keywords list and so you can go look at that and dive deeper into that. So my favorite tool to use for writing a listing and making a really good SEO friendly listing is scribbles. And so what you do is you can upload your keywords from your list. So I'm going to pull up my top pencil bag keywords, I'm going to click apply. And so, oh, I, sorry guys, I goofed that up. Let me just add a different, um, just want to focus on that, those 40. I like that we have this history button because I can't even tell you how many times I've gone back. It has it for almost all of our tools. So I use it a ton with Cerebro and scribbles because sometimes I'll leave them like, oh, dang it, I didn't say my work. I'm like, no, no worries. You've got me covered here with the history. Okay. So, um, top 40 pencil bag keywords check. Okay, let's try this again. There we go. Okay, so now I'll go back to Scribbles. Sorry, listing optimization. And then I'm gonna to go to Scribbles. And I'm going to put in my top 40 keywords here for my list. Apply. So what's super, super cool is the phrases are kind of color coordinated. So the more red it is, the more search volume it has. And then it goes down from there. So those at the bottom green would have less searches a month than pencil case. And then up here is just all of the individual words. So like we mentioned, there's thousands and thousands, right? We saw that there was like 35,000 different possible keywords that, you know, all of these different ASINs were indexing for. So how they can do that is, you know, these, let's just assume these 43 different in, individual words make up all of those thousands of phrases. So if we have at least the word in here, in theory, we should be able to also rank for those, or not rank, but at least index for those thousands of keyword phrases, right? So what I like to do is I wanna focus on my top keyword phrases and I wanna keep them in exact phrase form, which means I'm not gonna say pencil back um, or women's pencil bag, right? I wanna keep it exactly the phrase form as people are searching it. So I don't waver, I do it exactly in that phrase. But when I'm doing other things with the words, I can just use unique keywords. So let me show what I mean. So let's just assume I'm going to focus on um, pencil bag for women. You can see it crossed it off my list. And you guys, this is so, satisfying and so nice because <laughs> then you can also hide it so you feel like you're getting stuff done so you start seeing these getting crossed off and removed from your list and yeah, then like you're making progress right yes. like inch by inch you're making progress i like that same it's so nice and then i'm going to separate by it by a dash and let's just say my brand name is we'll just say my name so i like to have my brand at the beginning and then my main keyword phrase. And the beginning of your title has the most ranking juice power. So you want your very, very best keyword phrase at the beginning of your title. You're gonna get a lot more ranking juice, especially if you also have an exact phrase PPC campaign for that phrase. It just is double the, the power. So let's just say after doing my research, pencil bag from it is my main keyword phrase I wanna target. And then I'm going to have Let's see, cute pencil pouch. You can see, cross that off. 
um, see if I have school supplies still. School supplies. And then sometimes you can kind of get multiple keyword phrases in exact phrase form at the same time. So let's just see pencil pouch, cute, cute pencil pouches. So let's just see what I mean by that. So pencil pouch, cute, cross it off, pencil pouches. So at least I didn't have to say cute twice in that example. So it got both of those exact phrase matches in kind of one foul swoop, but it's not super readable, right? Pencil pouch, cute, pencil pouches. So I really wouldn't do that in, in real life because it's kind of looks tacky, but I'm just giving you an example. So again, just kind of figuring out, you know, I don't have it in front of me, but I'd have my other, you know, I'd have another um, screen looking at some of that data at the same time so that I could, you know, remember, okay, I want to target this particular phrase. So let's bring in Cerebro again. Load my history of just that one. Let's just say these are going to be my top keyword phrases. So you can rank it on organic rank. You can rank it on sponsor rank, Amazon recommended, competing products. Again, I would say this holds less weight, but they wanted to see which ones had the least competing products. So for example, well, that's a brand, so never mind. So what's cool is you can at least target brands with, you know, your PPC campaigns, but you just can't put brands in your listing. So this is interesting. This is obviously a misspelling, but one of their main keywords that they are doing fairly well for. They're in their organic rank, they're on the sponsored one position. So we have some more brands, which makes sense, right? Why they'd have less competing products because you can't put that in your listing. So there's a lot of misspellings here. And so you'll see, if we go back to scribbles, this up. Okay. So in our individual keywords here, you can see some of those individual keywords that have the misspellings. And so that for me is a perfect place where I put the back end search terms. And so right here, I don't worry about having it in exact phrase form. I just want to have it in just the unique words. So let's do pencil, case, cute, pouch, and I don't have any commas or anything to separate it other than a space between words. Big, school, cases, pen, pooch, again, another misspelling, Japanese, woman, Korean, gifts, middle, students, purple, pouches. So we do have, again, some of those brands so if you are suspicious at all, don't do it. Just check it first. And if that is a brand, make sure not to put that because that's something that you will get in trouble for on Amazon to have brands in your listing on any place, even if it's in the back end search terms. And then, okay, let's see if we can see some more. So there's another misspelling that we saw. So that's a perfect place. We don't want to have our customer see it, but it's great to have in the back end, right? Because we're going to hopefully index and hopefully rank for those misspellings. Uh, let's see. Hazard, I don't know if that's a misspelling or yeah, it's probably misspelling. And then another misspelling. So pencils, canvas, pocket, push case, etc. So I have 250 different characters that I can fill in with these keywords. And so this is a perfect place. You can see just like that, we still have a lot of space left, but I've already used a ton of those keywords. And so that's how we make up all of those thousands of keywords, because if you put these together in different, um, you know, groupings, then we're going to be having all those different phrases. Awesome. Um, we, we have a quick question, Karen, from yeah. Jason, who asked, 
So for the phrases that were green, a lower volume, would you ever modify the phrase or always keep as the original phrase regardless? I always like to have it in the exact phrase form when I'm trying to target any. So that's a great place for some of these lower volume keywords in this subject matter. So even like the misspelling like that. And then um, gifts for middle school students. So we have 50, we're almost there. So I'll just leave that one. Yeah, great question, Jason. So yeah, I like, I don't modify the order of it. I like to keep it exactly as it is because that's how you have the most ranking juice power. And to be honest, a lot of people still don't do that on Amazon. So it's still an opportunity for a lot of sellers to make use of that, to really have it in exact phrase form and then tie it together with also PPC campaigns in exact phrase form. You just get double the power, especially in your title. So what I found is your title holds the most weight for ranking your keywords. So make sure you have your best keyword phrases inside your title and try to make it as readable as possible. You can see right here, like I said, that wasn't very readable, right? Pencil pouch, cute pencil pouches. It's not terrible, but it's not great. And I separate those phrases or ideas with a comma. So I don't use and, I don't use um, a vertical line. I don't use brackets or anything like that. No special characters, only commas. And then I have one dash at the beginning just to force that canonical URL to, hope, to hopefully help me rank on other search engines like Google. So it's also a great place to have, you know, adjectives. So it's not, you know, you can see great isn't one of our main keyword phrases, but it kind of just helps the buyer. It's more readable and it's more salesy, right? Or premium. It's one of those words again that it's like, oh, or high end or colorful. The good thing is Q is an adjective and it's a keyword phrase. So that's perfect. But just adding some of those, you know, human words are going to help it not feel so robotic, right? So that's a great way to kind of break it in. And sometimes just even the use cases, right? Um, yeah, maybe it's not a keyword phrase, but it's important because it's gonna help you stand out. So maybe something like it holds um, up to 25 pencils. So it's not a keyword phrase, but it's one thing that's gonna help you stand out and look robust. Cause let's say nobody else has that in their title and you're like, oh, well, this one's cool because it holds 25 or, um, extra large or something like that. So it's a good balance between being readable, but also being really SEO friendly. And that's kind of what I like to do throughout the whole listing. So make sure your title though has exact phrase form keywords. And then your subject matter again, a great question, Jason, make sure you have, keep it in the exact phrase form. Don't switch the order of it. Just keep it exactly in that same order. And then your back end search term is another really powerful place to index and hopefully rank for those keywords, just putting the unique words in it. And then your bullet points and descriptions still are important places and they still can be indexed for keyword phrases, but it holds a lot less weight. So to be honest, I don't focus as much emphasis on my bullet points and descriptions with keyword phrases, only when it's appropriate, right? So some people in the past would just keyword stuff like crazy, like uh, pencil pouch, pencil bag, woman, uh, amazing pencil cases for teens. And it's just like, ooh, you know what I mean? It's very SEO packed full of keywords, but it's not fun for people to read, which actually kind of does the opposite of what you wanted to do, right? Because in the day we want to get people on our listing. We want to rank on Amazon for those, but we want people to get on the listing and actually buy, right? So we want it to be attractive and readable and really intuitive and answer those main questions, which is why does someone want to buy it, right? So use your title and your subject matter for that exact phrase form, and then your back in search terms to use the unique words. And then use your bullet points and your description to really sell your product, right? To really answer the questions, why they want to use it, why it's going to make their life better, why 
um, it's better than, you know, all your other competitor products. What makes yours unique and special? And when you can answer those questions, then you've really done your job well, right? Because you've satisfied Amazon, you have the keywords to help them, you know, index and show your, your listing to the right people and it's gonna help you convert. And when you convert more then Amazon wants to show you more. So it's this beautiful beast that kind of feeds each other. But at the end of the day, it all goes back to making sure you have the right keywords and you're using those keywords throughout your listing. And then you can really get your job done. So this has been really fun. Gary, do we have any last questions our last couple minutes here? Or should we talk about um, some of the other cool things really quick? Of yeah, yeah. I mean, before we close out, I think this is, this is great. It's super valuable. You know, I learned a lot as well. And if Jason or Byron has any other questions um, they'd like to ask in the chat, that'd be great. And um, I, I had a, a quick question, actually, yeah. in terms of repeating search terms, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, you know, I, there's like different schools of thought on this. I noticed, for example, in your title for pencil pouch, you've, you have it listed three times. And I believe you also had it in the, the back end. Can you just speak a little mm -hmm. bit about that? Um, like how much repetition is necessary and does it help at all or um, your thoughts on that? That's an excellent question. So for me, I do, sometimes it's tough, right? Sometimes you have products like this where, you know, you're gonna see pencil in almost every keyword phrase. So it's kind of like you have to use it several times in order to keep that exact phrase match. So I, in the title, I try to use the same word no more than three times, but two to three, I would say is optimal in your title. In the subject matter, I don't mind being more keyword stuffing. So even though I said pencil, sometimes, yeah, it is just like um, pencil bags, pencil pouch, pencil case, you know what I mean? And it's like, I've used this four or five times, but it doesn't matter as much because, you know, the customer's not going to read it and it's not, you know, violating any of Amazon's TOS, right? But yeah, definitely in your title, sometimes you have to unfortunately do that to use it several times. I would say try not to use the same word more than three times just to be overly repetitive and keyword stuffing. But um, I would say, yeah, so I'm doing it more for just ranking that phrase more than that word. So I would say once you've used that phrase at least one time, then you don't need to use it again. So that's why I kind of do the hide, but I do want to kind of capture that essence of the phrase if I can. So keep it in exact phrase form here. Yeah, that, that makes sense. And how about like for the back end search, search terms, right? I mean, you have pencil pouch already in the title three times. Would you still put it in the back end? Because like it's it's like real estate, right? You're trying to yeah. put as many as you can, but you don't want to like put, do too much and waste that real estate. What do you think? Yes, that's such a good point. Yeah, ideally you don't need to do that. If you have pencil pouch, especially in exact phrase form in your title, then yeah, you don't need to have it here. So that's why you're right. It would be great just if I already use it here, just cross it off so I don't even see it, and I'm just using the remaining words. Now sometimes. Cool. Sometimes, yeah, if you don't have more words, then you can get away with putting it in the search terms. But yeah, I would yeah. say start with your title and then anything that you haven't used in your title, then put in the subject or in the search terms. Awesome. Awesome. That's great. And then I, I also like sometimes I'll put in Spanish keywords yeah. in the back end as well, because there's a you know a high segment of the, the customers on Amazon using Spanish to search. So that could be really another, awesome. Yeah, excellent. Okay, we're we're out of time. I quickly wanted to uh, share a special offer that we have for you guys. I know Byron just signed up for Helium 10. Uh, you want to become an expert, and uh, maybe Karen can also share about that, as well as the the special offer that we have for everyone uh, and everyone catching the replay today. Yes, well, I just have to say I'm such a big fan of Gary, so I really wanted to do something special, and I convinced you know the management at Helium 10 to do this, which I have to say, I'm proud of myself and it just speaks volume of how much they love Gary because they don't usually do anything super crazy and special. So it's a really cool opportunity. You get two months of 50% off with Helium 10. And again, it's 
what's really great is it's totally risk-free. You can cancel at any time. And, you know, if you'd like, if you, let's say you've used it for a month, you don't like it, you can cancel and get, you know, your money back. So it's no pressure whatsoever. But what's awesome, not only do you get 50% off your two first months on Helium 10, but I'm also doing something really special where you get 50 ready to use bullet points for your listing. And like I mentioned, it's all about sales in your bullet points in your description. So you can use these bullet points and I've kind of broken them down into like risk, rever risk reversal bullet points and um, status bullet points and emotional bullet points and logical bullet points, just to kind of get your mind flowing on ideas of, okay, I wanna have at least one emotional bullet point. I want one, one logical, one risk reversal. So then you can kind of tweak it to fit your product and just get things flowing. And you can use it word for word and obviously put your own brand and your own product as you see fit, or you can just use it as a kind of a skeleton that you kind of build it out and you think, oh. So it's been super, super valuable for people that have gotten access to this. So I hope that's helpful. And then also you'll get access to um, a listing optimization class with me on April 22nd. And of course, all of the other great benefits um, I didn't even mention, but one really cool thing about Helium 10 is with your monthly subscription, not only do you get all of these cool, cool tools, and I've only shown you, you know, three, there's over 30. So you can imagine, and there's, I mean, it would blow your mind, all of these tools. We'll have to talk about that another time. But you also get access to Freedom Ticket, which is a super robust course on selling on Amazon, which goes into a really deep dive into ranking and PPC and listing optimization and all this amazing important stuff on selling on Amazon. It's taught by Kevin King and you also get access to that for free. So this is a super cool offer. I hope if you guys are not Helium 10 users yet that you take advantage of this because it is really special. It speaks volumes of how much we love Gary here at Helium 10. So all I have to do is just go to this um, website here, this link and I think you dropped that in the chat as well, right, Gary? Yes, it's in the chat and we will also share it in the replay in the email. So awesome. uh, people, so yeah, I, I highly recommend you guys check it out. Um, I mean, Karen covered a lot today talking about a deep dive into keyword research, researching your competitors, looking at you know PPC and also uncovering you know some of these like, gaps in the market and some of these tricks and also with scribbles, creating your listing and a, a lot of, uh, you know, things that can save you time, especially I, I didn't even realize that Karen put together this special bonus, the 50 ready to use bullet points for your listing. I mean, I think that that can be like a cheat sheet. You know, I'm going to mm -hmm. take a look at that. I might have to borrow some of that in my own listings, you know, you know, taught by a pro. So highly recommend that you guys uh, check that out. And um, I, I see Jason had a, another question. I have a coding background. So does Helium 10 have any kind of ability to do some automation, like creating a list of keywords and then do the human aspect of analysis? Do you, what do you think, Eric? <laughs> Put you on the spot. Yeah, that's a great question. I mean, certainly we've seen people like you as well that have done some really cool things where they basically take the, the skeleton of Cerebro and then build out their own Excel spreadsheet with different factors. And, you know, so I would say absolutely do that. I don't have anything, you know, to give you offhand, like a template to do that, but I certainly think you're right. If you have the coding background and you're really good with numbers and analyzing data, then yeah, many people have done that as well. And it's been effective for them where they have different triggers. If it has this, then go here. And these are like our green, really great keywords. And so yeah, I recommend to do that, Jason. I'm going to say super smart. I knew it when I saw those degrees in your back. I'm like, oh, we got a smart one here, Gary. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we, our audience, you know, is uh, very diverse and, you know, everyone has their special superpower. So I'm yeah. super excited to, yeah, to have everybody on. So again, Karen, thank you so much for coming back on. I really appreciate your time today. Um, and then thank you everybody for watching. Uh, thanks, Jason. Thanks, Byron, for tuning in. Hopefully this has been helpful to you guys. And uh, Karen, before we let you go, can I ask a quick question? You know, I'm all about the 80-20 rule, right? So we mm -hmm. covered so much about, you know, the keyword research, all these bells and whistles. What would be your number one recommendation to really help everybody watching to really, you know, get the right keywords, you know, for the research to, to create listings that, that convert? That's an excellent question. 
I would say that last, I had to say hack, but that last trick I shared was showing like, look at your top competitor and seeing what, which keywords that they're converting for on their sponsored ads. I think that's so powerful and it's kind of a good way to kind of piggyback on what's working for them without having to do, you know, all of the research and spending a ton. You can just already kind of jump the line. Like those are the keywords that are performing well. I know I'm going to do better for this and this reason because I've got, you know, a more diverse offer that solves more problems. So when they see it side by side, they're going to be like, this is, I want to try this. So I would say that's going to be a super powerful trick to save yourself a lot of time. Perfect. But I think so. Excellent. And um, what is the best way to connect with you, Karen, for people that want to learn more? Mm, great question. So um, there's a couple different ways. So I'm on Facebook. Uh, my name is Karen Reddy Thomas, and you can always send me a DM. Um, I'm also in our Helium 10 Facebook groups. We have Helium 10 members and then also FBA um, High Rollers. Those are two Helium 10 groups, which are awesome, super valuable resources. I'm in there. You can always tag me on a question. And then you can also email me personally, which I don't, I, to be honest, I don't get my email out often. So this is a, just because I love you, Gary, I think you're so awesome. So my email is karen.t at helium10.com. Perfect. All right. Thank you so much. I really appreciate the love. Karen, we, we'd love to have you on as well. Every time, you know, I learn so much. I'm sure our audience do too. So Again, I'm super grateful for your time. So uh, thank you again. And thank you everybody for watching. And we will see you guys at the next session. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Thanks again, Gary.